Hi guys, Judith from the Intuitive Body Foodie Network and I'm creating this video today for anyone that is already attuned to Reiki 1, 2, and or 3 and would like a reattunement. Um, think of this like a shot of espresso if you're already Reiki 3. Uh, this is a service that I often provide um, to graduates of my program. Um, in particular, those that don't actively use Reiki, whether that's daily or weekly. Um, if you're Reiki 1 or 2 and you are seeking uh, a Reiki 3 attunement, you will receive that as well. So there's going to be three parts of this video. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the Reiki 1 attunement, the Reiki 2 attunement, and the Reiki 3 attunement. And I would suggest if you're Reiki 1, 2, or 3, you just do all three. And if you have never been attuned to Reiki at all, you're curious about it, um, by all means, regardless of your age or your um, sexuality or your, or your sex, male, female, or gender, if you talk about gender, uh, this is essentially for anyone, regardless of who you are, okay? Uh, Reiki has no prejudice and no racism, so it really doesn't matter who you are. So what is Reiki? It's essentially um, the energy, space, and consciousness of everything. Source, God, if you will. The universe is it's beyond the universe. It's everything. Intelligence exists. Energy, space, and consciousness essentially exists in everything. Everything is energy, space, and consciousness. And so instead of using your own personal energy system, you are using energy from the entire universe. And what Reiki will do for you is it will expand uh, your, literally, the energy of your physical body, as well as you have all these invisible bodies, mental, emotional, F, um, an invisible physical body, etheric bodies. I'm not going to go into the teachings today too much, okay? I simply am doing this video because I was called to do it. Normally I have a very extensive teaching program because of the coronavirus, because of the close proximity that's required for what I do, because I do a lot of shamanic breath work. My breath is in your face, essentially, as well as other parts of your body. Um, I'm not able to provide this in person. And uh, until I was recently asked, um, by someone if I would consider doing online classes. I got a no for that and then a couple days later I was guided uh, by spirit that this is the part that I need to do because it is so essential and needed at this time. So what Reiki will do for you is basically it, it boosts your immune system, uh, it's activates cellular regeneration. Um, anyone that's sick or not feeling well for whatever reason, even beyond the coronavirus, it is beneficial. Um, now there is a 21, minimum 21 day protocol. Uh, it's called self-care <laughs> and it is essential. Uh, and I will talk a little bit about that I have been attuned to Reiki 1, 2, and 3 twice. I did an online, everything was strictly online. It was a pre-recorded. Um, it truly did not benefit me and that's why I'm very hesitant to do these sorts of things online. Um, then I received in person and students that I've had um, over the years are similar. Some have come from online and some have come from other teachers uh, in person. My own personal experience 
for my own self, but also having students that have come to me uh, through online, is that, um, and it could be the way that it has been taught online. I think that whole online thing needs to be restructured, and maybe this today is part of it. Um, part of moving forward with online Reiki um, is that it, it hasn't been effective. There is an, an energy space and a consciousness that is missing, and I think many of you that are in the corporate sector that have done Zoom uh, workshops, um, conferences, you will know, and science reveals this, psychology reveals this, that there is an element that is missing online than when we're in person, and that's communicating everything from one-on-one -on -one to group settings to especially this type of work. So uh, I don't think social distancing uh, is going to end anytime soon. Um, in fact, I know it's not. Uh, so something has to happen and, I'm, and this is part of it, I guess. This is an opening. As Spirit says, doors are closing and other doors are opening. Uh, which, you don't have to be a rocket science to know that, right? Um, especially today. So, Reiki will help literally physically heal the body. It will also, um, you know, there's a saying, God helps those who help themselves. So, it's like, if you have a chronic migraine, um, because you overtrain physically with exercise, you don't eat properly, you eat too much sugar, you're overstressed, and you keep taking Tylenol. Tylenol is only as effective as the next pill that you take until you start taking steps to deal with the actual cause, because the headache's just a symptom. Until you take steps to deal with the cause, it's only ever a band-aid. And Reiki is no different. <laughs> um, there's a lot of people that think it's a magic pill. It's not. It's, uh, it's like a diet and exercise program. It's something that you have to be diligent in, and hence the 21 days minimum protocol. And what is the 21 days minimum protocol? It is um, the, the, the laying on of hands, essentially. And what this does is is the reason for 21 days is that you work through those energy centers in your body called chakras and you work through starting at the root coming up to the crown and there's a reason you don't start at the crown and go down you start at the root and come up literally you want to purge all that um, lower vibrational energy out and it's all about awakening you might have heard this word the kundalini literally your energy centers from the root up um, and when you so there's seven of them and when you do this process it it activates those centers uh, and it takes um, so it's essentially three cycles uh, three times seven is 21 um, so it takes 21 days for these seven um, chakras to be fully activated. Until then, if you, until then, you probably won't feel any sensation, heat, or tingling, or anything from your hands. Uh, that's where the energy that you're working with comes. I mean, energy comes from all the different chakras, and you have major chakras and minor chakras, including on the soles of your feet. Again, I'm not going to go into the teachings. Okay, I'm just going to kind of give you an overview so you don't walk into this attunement process blind. Um, you use your hands to emit the energy. Although, it, Reiki also um, exits the other uh, chakras of your body. And then there's a whole thing, because I'm a shamanic Reiki teacher. I'm a shaman by nature, and Reiki is also shamanic, and then the two intermingled is a whole different ballgame. But 
So there is other things that, you know, we typically use our hands. Now you can um, do chakras to chakras, so hand chakras to hand chakras, third eye to third eye, crown to crown. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into that because that's a very advanced uh, shamanic practices. For today's intent and purpose, it's simply to activate the energies centers in your palms so that you can do self-healing and you can aid and you don't really heal others you simply are a conduit a facilitator of energy that helps to activate the innate healing of all physical bodies regardless of whether that's a human body the planet earth animals plants food whatever reiki can be used on everything okay and again i'm not even going to go into that because my course is extremely comprehensive and I just don't know if I'm ready yet to put this online. So perhaps in time, like I said, because of the nature of things, I will. But for now, it's just to get you attuned because this is what the world needs right now. The other thing that Reiki does is it helps alleviate fears, um, all mental issues right now are emotional in nature they're rooted in fear and fear is your root chakra our entire global financial structure is collapsing before our very eyes and we'll continue to do so because it has things have to die in order for things to be reborn you hear about this in you know christianity i'm a born again Christian, right? I'm personally not. Um, but I'm, I'm just saying, you hear people say that. Um, in nature, trees uh, fall over and decompose, they die, to make, to f help fertilize the ground for new life, okay? Everything is about, that's why God is Alpha and Omega. It's ending and beginning. Um, on that note, there's no such thing as good or evil. It's good and evil, the tree of life and death, okay? Fear comes from living in the world of or. It doesn't come from living in the world of and. And so what Reiki will help you do, it will help you, but again, you have to participate in this. Um, this is not just uh, somebody does it for you and it's your life is better, it's fixed. Everything requires energy and effort and consciousness from you. Um, so it will help to alleviate fears um, and I highly recommend, especially today, <laughs> because so many people are stressed and depressed and worried and that's just another form of stress. Anxiety, another form of stress. Stress and, anxi uh, stress and depression sorry, anxiety and depression, two similar energies just expressed differently. Again, I won't go into all that because I know for many people, it's especially if you're new to Reiki, it's way over your head. You're not, you don't have a reference point to come from yet. Uh, so just receive. That's all I'm going to ask is receive, be open. You probably won't feel anything um, if you have never been attuned to Reiki before and if you've never ever received any sort of energy work before and that's okay that if you fall into that category it's even more essential that you you do the minimum 21 days and I say minimum I when I do my workshops I stress that this 21 day be the rest of your life I have been attuned to Reiki for I don't know I guess almost 15 years and I do Reiki every day I still do Reiki on myself every single day um, and I would highly recommend that you do even if it's just five minutes a day um, because it literally changes the synapses of it literally rewires your brain uh, in a, Cellular regeneration is um, just part of Reiki and your whole vibration and the way you see and feel and experience life changes. But again, it's a process. 
and it's not a clean and easy process in my own life. It's been very messy because um, it's like detox. It purges all the crap out of your body. And so that's a messy process and it can be a painful process and it can cause a lot of endings in your life that you may not psychologically be prepared for but that you desire, you need and are essential for your life. Um, so I'm not going to promise anybody that if you go through this um, attunement process that life is going to be all peachy keen and you're suddenly going to jump into a, an energy of space and consciousness of peace and joy and bliss and nirvana. If you've been alive for any amount of time, you know life doesn't work that way. Um, life is messy and life is painful. Um, and you have to go through it. <laughs> the only way through something is through it. <laughs> yes, you can go over, around, and under, but you, essentially, though there are many different options of how to get through it, you still have to go through it. Um, so this is not for the timid, the meek, or the uh, fearful, okay? It does require courage. And uh, you can be timid, you can be meek, and you can be fearful. As long as you have courage and you're willing to go through it, then you can. But if you're timid, weak, and fearful, and all you ever want to do is escape, I've been there, I think all of us have at some point in our life, um, then this probably isn't for you at this time. Although, <laughs> you need it the most. So my suggestion is put on your big girl, big boy pants and just do it, okay? Uh, because you need it and the world needs it of you at this time. And if it didn't, Spirit wouldn't call me to do this video. There are certain symbols um, that I use. Symbols are simply um, an image of an energy space and a consciousness. My physical body is, an, an, is the image of an energy space and consciousness of a personality that I've come to express. Uh, and a tattoo, a photograph, is merely the image of an energy space and consciousness of something or someone. Essentially, that's what these symbols are. Everything is an entity. Everything is an energy space and a consciousness. So if the concept of entities scares you, then you don't understand your own body, you don't understand businesses, you don't understand houses, you don't understand cars. You have a complete lack of understanding of this material world not to mention the spirit world. Um, everything is an entity. Now, the reason why I said earlier, um, life is good and evil, life is life and death. Um, when you attune to Reiki, you will become more aware, especially as you activate your centers and increase your energy field. Uh, and in that quickens because um, everything is energy and so everything is oscillating and in that it creates a vibration, it creates a sound, it creates light. The quicker the vibration, the quicker the spinning in other words, the larger. Think of if you know anything about astronomy, the planet Jupiter, it's the largest planet in the universe. That's what essentially Reiki does. It just expands you and expands you. And so in that expansion, you come into contact both visibly and invisibly with more entities. Okay? And it's only your judgment of that entity, entity that decides if it's good or evil. Um, everything serves source, you know, just read the scripture Job if you're not familiar with uh, scriptures or good or evil or the understanding of good and evil. The story of Job expresses that quite clearly as does Jesus in the wilderness. Um, there are tempters 
there are, are entities that tempt uh, always for your highest good even though it may not feel like that and really it's for the highest good of source through you okay um, so the story of Job is God's talking to the angels and Satan walks by and Jesus says yo Satan have you seen my man Job and Satan's like yeah but you got a, a fence around this huge hedge around him well I'll take it down you can do whatever you want to him but you can't kill him okay you can do anything to turn him away from me but you can't kill him I'm giving you permission I'm giving you a task to do so Satan comes down and does everything he can to poor Job kills off his family kills off all his animals gives him basically boils from head to toe puts this man through the absolute ringer and he still won't curse God won't turn against God okay so Satan served God source God God God's instructions God's divine will doesn't make sense to us just like Moses and the Pharaoh God worked through Moses and the Pharaoh God hardened the Pharaoh's heart why we're all instruments I hope you understand that we're, we are all instruments of something greater that's why we, they say we're puppets on a string in a sense we are okay um, it's not for you to to well you can if you want but it's really not our place to judge something that we don't have any clue about although we do because that's part of the experience <laughs> Um, is to judge and to think that we are greater and more knowing than something that's greater and more knowing. Uh, we are all in that respect. When we do that, we all fall from grace. Um, we all fall like the angel, Lucifer. Okay. Um, these are all just my points of view based on awareness that I have. If you have a different point of view and a different awareness, I get it. Everybody does. Um, so for me everybody's right and nobody's wrong everybody's wrong and nobody's right <laughs> because everything is the opposite of what it appears to be and nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be that essentially is life in a nutshell some of this might go way over your head that's okay um, just allow for it to permeate Try not to judge it, walk away when you're done, and just go on with your life, okay? I'm like Johnny Appleseed planting seeds. That's all I'm doing to awaken your consciousness. And I'm going to create this ceremony here to help activate these centers within you, which will open you up consciously. Uh, I do this because this is our physical brain but it's also our higher awareness the seat of our higher awareness uh, it's called the third eye you also have something even more potent than the third eye and that's your oversoul eye so your third eye is here and your oversoul eye is here and your crown chakra is here all of these centers are going to be awakened um, for those of you like I said that are completely out of touch with energy and all you know is the material world you may not experience anything and you might think this is a complete waste of your time um, I'm not only going to ask that you try to remain open they entertain the possibility okay in spite of your skepticism and trust me I get it I'm extremely skeptic um, life experience and skepticism uh, has taught me and things that happened to me like I said life experiences has taught me to simply allow to allow for things that I can't even comprehend uh, because you know that's a very arrogant statement to think I should be able to comprehend everything no if you can accept that you're a dumb ignorant human being with the potential of great learning then you'll get a lot out of this and you'll get a lot out of life 
it's okay to say that you know what you know and that you're learning and that yes, you're smart in some things, but for the most part, we're just really dumb and ignorant. Uh, and so if you can allow for that and embrace it, then that will open the door automatically for you to have new experiences and learn new things. Otherwise, if you think you know it all, you have nothing to learn. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is that um, in spite of the fact that you may or may not be aware of energy, you may have experiences. And regardless of whether you have already received Reiki, been attuned to Reiki, or have never had any sort of Reiki or any other type of energy work, you might just be one of those individuals, um, especially if you're younger, if you're a starseed child uh, and indigos. Um, so indigo just means that you're a third eye person, you're highly psychic, uh, but you're latent, you've been suppressed, you've suppressed yourself, uh, you've been suppressed by others with bodies, without bodies visible, invisible, um, and so this might awaken you and suddenly you start having all sorts of experiences. Starseed means your crown, you're above the crown, uh, and so your vibration is that much higher and your awareness is that much higher. And so, again, like the indigos, you may have been suppressed or by visible and invisible sources and or suppressed yourself, and this will awaken you. Uh, and so, again, you may have experiences. I've had some students come in that are star seed that, boom, are way more advanced than I am. And that's beautiful because uh, all I needed to do is be who I am and let source work through me. Uh, and in activating them and awakening them, now they go out in the world and they do what they've come to be and do. Um, and it's as simple as that, but it does require courage. Uh, especially if you're indigo or crown, because it really does awaken your psychic abilities. So one of the curses and the blessings for me, as an example, is everything that's happening today, I already saw, started seeing three years ago, a little over three years ago. So food shortages, pestilence, uh, sorry, not pestilence. Uh, well, it came as pestilence. Um, plague is the word that it came as. Uh, so the coronavirus. Um, and there will be famine and I saw earthquakes and floods and fires. You start to see all this and that's why I say, you know, it, it, your sense of trust will never come from you. It has to come from something greater. I don't care what label you want to put on that. If you're atheist or agnostic or mystic or religious or re depending on what religion you are, um, whether it's Muhammad or Yahweh or, or Krishna or whatever, um, or source, if you're indigenous, First Nations. Um, there is something. You have to respect that everything that is didn't just, you know, even a scientist will tell you a Big Bang theory. They believe in something, okay? <laughs> so they believe in something bigger than what they can comprehend in their own little spectrum of thinking and we all do so just all I'm going to say is try to be open to that um, and try to have faith in that because when you start receiving visions such as things that I've received uh, if you if you don't have trust in something greater you're going to automatically drop to an energy of fear um, and horrible anxiety. Partly why I've suffered back and forth, I've vacillated back and forth my whole life between anxiety and depression. Uh, you will go through periods of time where you think you have to save the world, you don't. Just be an energy in the world. Just be a consciousness and a vibration of the highest, most divine, unconditional love and joy that you can be. That is enough. Nothing else is required of you. You are not here to save others. You're not even here to save yourself. 
You're simply here to be an energy, a space, and a consciousness. And that will permeate and reverberate outward. And that will help others. We are individuals and collective. And the collective is only as strong as the weakest link. So we are here to lift each other up. All right, and you can only do that by being an energy space and a consciousness of trust. I have students even that have gone through this program with me and that have apprenticed with me uh, that still drop down and get into that energy of fear. It is, it requires vigilance. It requires not hope. It requires faith. I hear so many people say hope. Hope without action is useless. And the action is merely faith. It is that trust in something, even if you have no clue what it's about, even if it ends in demise, you still have a faith that that demise is part of the plan of something greater, even if you don't understand it. This is why most people turn from religion to atheism because something happens in their life and they can't seem to get out of that shoulda, coulda, woulda. If God is taking care of everything, then why did this happen? You know, what's that? I think his name was Fuller, wrote a book, Bad Things Happen to Good People. Bad things happen to good people all the time. First of all, don't be so arrogant to think that you're good. And don't be so arrogant to think that something bad is happening to you. You don't have the right to judge it, but again, we all do. We come to have that experience to judge, okay? But the point is, um, everyone thinks you need to kill the ego. You don't. You just simply need to come out of judgment. It's that simple. Everything is just an interesting point of view. Every thought and emotion that you have is an interesting point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting whether it's a thought or emotion, if you feel something, oh, interesting point of view, I, I'm feeling this, right? That I have this point of view, because then you tend to judge it. Same as if something comes out of somebody else's mouth. You know, our first reaction is to agree or disagree, but it's just an interesting point of view. They have that point of view. And wow, what an interesting point of view that I have this point of view that they have that point of view. Again, if that goes over your head, it's okay. Just allow the seed to be planted. Everything is just an interesting point of view. So Reiki is just an, an, an instrument um, to help you, I hate using the word because it's so new age, trendy, but to help you ascend out of, and ascend just means to literally move up, right? Up and outward, uh, out of fear into a greater sense of trust um, and it's not blind trust okay I am very trusting of people but I have a, my guard up I've, I've had a lot of things happen in my life um, that has helped me to create healthy boundaries um, because I still need self-preservation all of us do so this isn't about bl blindly trusting people in authority or other people, your peers, and um, even your children, right? Um, it's, it's not about blindly trusting. That you do in a source. But when it comes to each other, it's about having some cautious, some cautious optimism, I guess, but a healthy, a healthy level of Hmm, and it's not coming from a thought because what Reiki does is it it, it helps you feel other people's energies <laughs> and whether you're aware of it or not. And what that does is it activates this deep inner knowing that your mind that bypasses your thinking mind. So my innate nature is I want to give everybody the benefit of the doubt and do every you know, I just want to be giving, giving, giving. But my in deep inner nature will sometimes say, yeah, you want to do that, but... So the spirit nature of me is saying, no, because you're not going to help that person by helping that person. You're going to be enabling them at the cost and expense of your own well-being. And when you, when you um, 
when you do that, when you, when it comes at your own cost of your own health and well-being, then you're not at the vibration that you need to be to do the work that you need to be and do that you've come to be and do in the world. So, <laughs> you know, life is tricky. Life is an interesting fluctuations of energy and trying to find energetic balance. Um, okay, so that's all I'm going to say about that. I, I'm not going to, even though I'm going to attune you to the Reiki, I said I'm not going to be teaching you, I'm not going to be, there's a lot to learn by the way, but I'm not going to teach you that. Um, so I'm not going to show you how to do attunements, even though I'm going to attune you to Reiki 3. Um, I'm not going to tell you what the symbols are, they're all online. Um, I'm not going to tell you, um, usually I put, I take people through guided meditations, I introduce them to their power animals, their totem animals, their spirit guides, I take them on past life regressions, um, there's a lot I do, I'm not going to do that in this video, okay? Uh, and then there's a whole apprentice program, but I, obviously you can't, I'm not going to do that here either. Uh, so it's just simply attuning you. And normally what I would do is I would have a large teddy bear or something. Um, it's called an effigy or a, a surrogate or an artificial body. Um, but you can use your own physical body. So I can use my own physical body to attune you. <laughs> um, or what I was told to do, and this is what I'm going to do, because my, my ability to visualize things that aren't really there is so acutely strong that I can actually make things materialize, I'm going to do that. Um, I am going to, I'm sitting on a stool I am going to envision uh, the body of Christ. I'm not talking Jesus. Jesus embodied the Christ consciousness. Um, I am literally going to call upon the body of Christ. And there's a reason that I'm doing that. I know some of you just got really excited. Um, the reason I'm going to do that is because it is the Christ consciousness that you deal with when you're using Reiki. Uh, it's the only way you can break through illusion and deception, including your own deception. So yes, there, um, there will be shadow work for you in upcoming days and months and years. Um, all the shadows that exist within the world originate from within first and we merely project that onto others. So, uh, I'm going to use an invisible Christ body. And another reason why I'm going to use the invisible Christ body is because it contains the consciousness of Christ, it's going to be that much more potent for you and for the entire world. I don't think I could do this if I just use my own body. This truly requires something of that consciousness. And I'm already feeling all the entities, my teammates pushing in on me to get going on this, because I tend to talk a lot, and they just want me to get to it. So I have gridded, I've created a circular grid using selenite. Um, which is protection, by the way. That is another thing that Reiki can do for you, is it can provide protection, energetic, invisible, and physical protection. I did talk uh, ever so briefly about entities, uh, and that as you expand, you will come more and more into different entities. Uh, again, part of what I teach is how to communicate with entities, how to get entities to work for you. You can literally also help transform lower vibrational, what people call evil entities, demons and that, into higher vibration 
more conscious light beings. Again, I'm not going to go into any of that here. Um, simply here today to attune you, okay? And to show you the 21 day protocol that I'm, I beg, I really do beg of you for your sake, not for mine. Do not limit yourself to 21 days. Make this a daily practice starting now for the rest of your life. This is something that you can do on yourself because I'm attuning you to Reiki 2 and 3. Once you do it to yourself, regardless of whether you've already been attuned to Reiki 1, 2, and 3, or you're brand new to Reiki, do this on yourself for a minimum 21 days, and I'd say a year, 365 days is what I keep hearing, before you practice on others, okay? Just because the vibration of the world right now is just, boom, it's wonky, it's, but it's, there's, there's an energy that's trying to anchor a low vibration. Uh, and so starseed children, 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 if you're under the age of 35, to me you're still a child, uh, 25, 25, 35, whoo, okay, 25, 35, you in particular are going to benefit from this. Uh, it's just going to open you exponentially. Um, I already know that a lot of you are going to ask after this, will I teach? I don't know. Will I teach online? Like I, like I said, I don't know. I, I just kind of go with the flow and I'm in the moment, which is why even though I say things, they don't always get done because spirit just takes me on a different path. <laughs> I deviate, but not because of me, because of spirit. So let me go through the attunement process uh, right now. The only thing that I'm going to ask you to do is to sit with your feet on the ground and place your hands palm up on your legs, okay? Try to sit with your back erect without anything against it, but don't worry. If you have a chair with a back on it, energy Reiki is energy. Energy flows through all things. It's not blocked by concrete or steel or wooden chairs or anything. It's not blocked. Um, in fact, it's not even blocked by consciousness because you are this incredibly dumb lower consciousness and this incredibly aware, all-knowing consciousness. And your all-knowing consciousness is constantly guiding you. And it can get through even if you try to block it, it can get through. So don't even worry about your own consciousness, okay? Your own rejecting. Uh, you're probably going to be, like most people, is, you know, is anything happening? And you're, you're going to be constantly like, nothing's happening. Why isn't... This is the human brain, right? This is our human consciousness, the lower part of us. We call it the lower ego. Um, just be aware of it, okay? Don't try not to judge yourself. You're going to judge me. Try not to. It's okay. You're going to judge the whole process. Try not to, but it's okay. I mean, everything is okay. Um, at some point, though, you need to start trusting. <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> uh, so palms up, and then I'm going to start on your back, and I'm going to do something, and then I'm going to come around, and I'm going to do something with your hands, and then I'm going to ask you to put your hands together and bring them at your heart and that's really all you need to do okay all you need to do is put your hands out and receive <laughs> and then bring your hands together and give gratitude it's that simple that's all you need to do that's all that's required of you i'm the one that's going to be doing all the work here of which you may or may not be aware of you may feel something, you may experience something, you may not, okay? So, um, in that, I am going to do something on an energetic level to invite in, and you can do this with intention, um, if you so choose. You, just please remember, you are always in control. Remember I said, you're, you are a lower and a higher awareness, a lower self and a higher self. Even in that, you're still always in control of what you receive, okay? The universe, it's in the Bible again. I'm not religious, by the way, but I have read the Bible because it resonates on so many different 
levels, some of the, a lot of messages. <laughs> uh, God never gives you more than you can bear. You probably heard that, right? Even if you're not religious, you probably heard it. God never gives you what you cannot bear. So if you're receiving something, if there's something in your life and you think that you can't bear it, see, on a lower consciousness, you probably can't, but your higher consciousness and God knows it, or source, or whatever you want to call it, knows that you can. And it's like a little seedling that's trying to come up through the ground. Let's take a maple tree in the forest, right? You got this beautiful canopy of trees that's blocking the sun. I told you, life isn't easy, right? The canopy doesn't open so the sun can get on that little seedling and make life easy for the seedling. No, that seedling has to struggle. In the struggle, it develops a core strength, the stem. Your core strength is an inner, literally, your, your, all of your intuition and your inner strength comes from your core, physically and metaphysically, invisibly and visibly from your core not your head. <laughs> it comes from your core. And you strengthen literally from the core at an energetic invisible level through all the struggles that you have in life. Why do you think struggles exist? God's not a twisted being. It knows, in a sense it is, it's like a Jekyll and Hyde, but, um, but it's for your benefit because everything serves it. So it's very self-serving in a sense. Um, and we serve <laughs> by allowing for the process and allowing ourselves to die metaphysically so that we can be reborn. And no, you don't have to be Christian or any sort of religion to be reborn. I rebirth people. I have rebirthed many people through this process. Um, you become an energetic midwife to yourself and to others. So. Uh, if you do not want to have contact with certain entities, your intention simply of no, <laughs> not now, uh, is enough, okay? Um, please do not think that in this you become powerless. The whole purpose and intention of Reiki, we call it attunements, but the real the real thing that's happening is empowerment. Reiki is all these, what we call the attunements, Reiki one, two, three, they're levels of empowerment. Um, so you become empowered in Reiki one to a certain level of a consciousness, of an energy space and consciousness, okay? Of an awareness, of an intelligence, of a, of a, feeling and a knowing without actual thinking. And Reiki 2 does the same and Reiki 3 does the same, right? So it's like having a lighting a match, that's Reiki 1. Turning on a flashlight is Reiki 2. Turning on a floodlight is Reiki 3. Okay, so it's just different levels of illumination, of, of ex where that light can reach. Because in that light is awareness, right? You never see a shadow until you cast light on it. So if you only have a match, most is in the dark, and only you only have a little spectrum of light. So you're not seeing a lot of the shadow. But as you move through the process, level two and level three, that light gets bigger and bigger and shines. You see more, so you can see what the shadows are. Now, does that mean that you're, you're gonna stop projecting your shadow onto others? No, that's a constant diligent, lifelong process. Uh, I hear a lot of people, even in the students that I um, have graduated through my program, they say, oh, I've leveled up. <laughs> Please try not to get into your lower ego thinking it's, you know, everything, the be all and the end all. Uh, it goes back to what I said. If you can allow for the fact that you are dumb and ignorant and that you still have something to learn, you will always be humble. And that's where you need to be in the energy of ego, okay? It's okay to say, yes, I know this. Sometimes I know things without knowing how I know. I don't take credit for that, but I, I do take credit for the fact that I can receive it, right? 
uh, and that I'm aware of it. Uh, and yes, there are some things that I've studied and I've learned and I, you know, it's not wrong. It's not, nothing is wholly good or wholly evil. Life is good and evil. <laughs> it's the balance, right? That's the moderation is the balance of good and evil. So if I can allow for my lower ego to say, I feel good about myself because I put in energy, time and energy and effort, and I learned this, and I can feel good about myself for knowing that I've learned this and that I'm, I'm actually pretty good at this, you know, like I'm efficient at it and I get results. That's different than, you know, I'm the best, nobody can, you know, compete with me and you're nothing and I'm everything. That's you at a lower vibration. But if you can say, yeah, I'm pretty good at this. I wonder what else I can learn about this, right? Is there anything else I can learn? I'm sure there must be. So what else is possible here? That's when you're in a, an energy of balance. You're not dismissing. You're not completely ignoring the fact that you've come here to, to experience as an ego, but you're not completely wrapped up in the lower ego that you don't allow for change, difference, growth, uh, mutability, okay? Okay, enough said. Um, so, like I said, seated, feet on the floor, palms up on your knees, then I will tell you to bring your hands together, put them at your heart, give gratitude, I will let you know when the process is over. Um, I'm going to ask you to linger in, an, in the energy. Well, some of you are already activated. Well, wow. okay. Yes, and you might be here just for healing. You might not want to be attuned. You might just be coming here for healing. And yes, you can receive healing just by sitting through these attunements. Reiki does not mean that just because you go through Reiki 1, 2, and 3 and get the empowerments, the attunements, does not mean you need to actively be a Reiki practitioner. You might only want to come for a healing, and that's okay. So if you're worried about COVID, whether you and your family have got the symptoms, you've got COVID, or you're trying to keep it at bay, you're trying to protect yourself and your family, um, you try to protect the rest of the world if you have COVID from getting the symptoms from you. Yes, this will help. It will help, um, especially if you do the 21 days. So I'm going to do the attunement first, and then I'm going to show you the 21 day protocol, what you need to physically do. It can take anywhere, usually it takes 20 to 30 minutes until you get used to it, and that can take about 21 days. I would strongly recommend that you still allow 30, day, 30 minutes every day, but if, you know, two or three years down the road, if all you can give yourself is five minutes, um, there's a clock technique, and I will teach you that as well. You can put Reiki on a clock. <laughs> uh, I'll teach you that after. That is one thing I will share with you. Um, so right now, get ready, okay? In advance, Whatever you believe in, um, just even if you don't believe in anything, just give thanks. Thank you for this process. Even if you're just thanking yourself, okay, for allowing yourself to be here for this, however long this video is and for how long this attunement process is, give yourself gratitude and thanks uh, because clearly something about your ego is being receptive to receiving. Okay? All right. Enough said. So I'm just going to go through a little process. I'm going to call in some entities, helpers. I work with Archangel Michael and Raphael. Archangel Michael is, just, if you don't know, you don't have to believe in angels, by the way, I've heard this. Um, I don't know that I believe in angels. I just experience angels, What I, my understanding of angels. They're just entities, okay? Archangel Michael is um, very protective, governs all other archangels and angels. There are entities above and then there's entities beyond that which some people call aliens. I'm not going to go into any of that. 
but I do call upon those two. Uh, Raphael is the energy of healing. Michael is the energy of protection. Okay. If nothing else, those two. If you want to get in, and some of you might resonate with Gabrielle. Uh, Gabrielle is also an energy of protection, um, but also an energy of communication. Um, they do have colors, so don't be surprised if you, some of you may experience colors. I'm not going to go into your experiences. I don't want to. Uh, I, I just I want you to simply receive an experience. And if you want to private email me and have discussions later, that's fine. Um, those are. Michael, Raphael, Jophiel, and Raziel are who I work with, and sometimes I call in uh, Gabrielle Christ Jesus, Mary Magdalena, Mother Mary Buddha, Krishna. There's a whole bunch. It depends on who needs to come in. I don't really bring them in. They just say, hey, I'm here. Um, including, uh, sometimes we'll hear names and it's people that are associated with you that once were alive and had bodies and no longer are. They might be past relatives like great great grandparents, grandparents, parents, friends. Um, then you have Reiki guides, spirit guides. There's a whole slew. I'm not going to, to say them all. If there are certain Beings that resonate with you, ask them to be with you in this process. That's all I'm going to say. Whether it's a past loved one or somebody, some entity that you believe in, whether it's Christ, Mary, Krishna, Allah, doesn't matter, okay? Um, Muhammad, it, it really doesn't matter. This is your personal journey. And it's not for me to say that you're right or that I'm right. You're here for your own journey. That said, I do call, I do invoke or and become aware of certain entities around me. I give gratitude to all the entities that are here, even the trickster ones, because I've had trickster entities in my life. They're the ones with the rod that, you know, or the whip, you know, because they're trying to get you on the straight and narrow, but they can only do that by pulling you off and showing you that you're off, by showing you that you're an illusion, that are showing you the deceptions. Um, they serve a purpose too. <laughs> um, I don't typically ask for them to come in. Um, sometimes they're just called in by Michael or Raphael or Gabriel or whoever. Raziel is the entity that I work with for death and transfer, uh, death and what I call crossing over. So it's a metaphysical death. It can be a literal death. Um, and by calling them these particular, and Jophiel is the highest, she's the vibration of joy, which is the highest vibration. Joy is akin to unconditional love. Um, I work with those four, Michael, Raphael, Jophiel, and Raziel, in particular because they kind of, if anything else requires, any other entities are required for the job, they bring them in. I don't need to think I control the universe. I don't. Um, I just need to let the universe work through me, okay? And just trust that so long as I have a relationship with those particular entities, because Michael rules over all of them, that it gets done, okay? And um, Michael is not God, by the way. Michael works for, you know, we all work for somebody, right? Uh, we don't always get paid, but we always work for somebody. Um, our payment comes in different forms. Uh, in the form of good health, in the form of good relationships, loving, kind relationships, wonderful neighbors. It's not to say that if you don't have that in your life that you're not a good person. It just means you haven't got to a certain level of consciousness. Or maybe they haven't around you. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm, when I start this, I'm going to bring in some, just so that you understand, so that when you're doing this, if you want to do this for yourself, and I highly recommend you only do this for yourself for the time being, again, unless you're already Reiki 3, 2 or 3, then work on others. Reiki 1 is still just for you, okay? Reiki 2 is when you then start going into the world as a practitioner. Reiki 3 is when not only are you a practitioner, but you begin to teach others. and 
you will hear people say, I'm a master. Um, I'm Reiki 3, I'm a master, I'm a teacher, I'm a master. Just as an FYI, I don't think there's any person on this planet that is a master. Um, there may be some living masters. Uh, you know, people think of the Dalai Lama as a living master. I personally don't think there, there are masters on this plane. Um, I think they may appear to be masters compared to the rest of us. <laughs> um, and to some degree, they might be mastered in certain capacities. It's like we all are aware. In, we all have awareness of certain things. So, you know, it's not, we will say it, I'm more aware than that person. Yeah, you are in certain areas, but you're probably less aware in other areas. You know, <laughs> we want to compare, but it's probably not in our best interest or in the best interest of others to do that. Um, that said, Reiki 3 is really about teaching. And any mastery is about self-mastery. It's not about having mastery over others, being better than others, okay? It's about self-mastery. So, without further ado, I'm going to call in some of my teammates. And if there's people that you want to bring in, by all means, bring them in. All right, invite them. Um, and ask that only light and love, unconditional love, and the light of all awareness come between you and I and anyone else that might come into your circle. Um, and that's really all that's required. So hands up. I'll tell you when to bring gratitude right now, your prayer, intention, gratitude, invocation, bringing in those that you choose to bring in only unconditional love and the awareness, the light of total awareness. Um, and that's all you need to do right now. Okay. Um, so here is where I will be working. And this is where I will call upon the body of Christ, the invisible body of Christ. And I will do the attunement on this invisible body with the intention that you are incorporated in this invisible body so that this is how energy works. It will transmit to you. Just like when I have a thought, I can transfer that thought energy, whether it's through speed or direct thought to you, okay? This is energy, okay? Okay. Let's start. I'm working on your back first, okay? But right now, oh, you might want to pause this and just take a little drink of water. Water is a conductor of energy and you need to stay hydrated. And even after all this is done, drink lots of water, especially for the next 21 days. If you feel called to fast, water fast for you know a few hours or a day or whatever, just allow whatever process and journey you go on. But right now, stop the video, go get a little sip of water, and then start it up again. And when we're done, drink more water and try to stay hydrated. Okay, that'll help because you're going to be purging, literally purging, um, uh, physical and energetic toxins. From your body stuff because your energy is going to shift and you know there's stuff in your muscles and your bones and in your joints and that all that's going to come up and water helps to flush it okay just so you understand what that process is okay so when you're ready
Bring your hands together and place them up at your heart. Bring your hands together and place them up at your heart. If you are experiencing anything in this moment, continue to allow yourself to experience it. You may wish to just pause this video and linger in it. For those of you who are not yet experiencing anything and are ready for the Reiki to attend, Proceed, and for those of you who need to pause, come back to this when you're ready. Like I said, I'm going to do Reiki 1, 2, and 3 attunements right now in this one video. So now, I will move to Reiki 2. So again, your hands should be on your knees, palms up, open to receive. Bring your hands together and place them at your heart.
So again, if you're in the process of experiencing something, just pause this video and linger in it. Otherwise, if not, proceed to the Reiki free attunement for those of you that are still experiencing something. Simply come to this Reiki free attunement when you are ready. I will now proceed with Reiki. And again, hands open, on your knees. Hands together and at your heart. And if you are experiencing something, pause the video and continue to linger in this. And come back to when you're ready. <clears throat> the next part of this video is the hand positions for the next 21 days. By the way, I'm burning here. <laughs> I don't know if any of you are, but... Um, and that is one of the things that you eventually you will feel an enormous amount of heat it will build up over time it could take anywhere from a day to years for you to feel energy and heat coming from your palms um, as you continue to progress your entire body will heat up because all of the chakras and that's what happens with me I literally just go on fire um, and there's a lot of other things that uh, you will experience. Um, colors, sounds, smells, literally sensing entities around you physically, through your third eye and sometimes physically seeing entities. It's always going to be unique to you and where you are in your receptivity. Um, again, if you need to private email me, uh, by all means, please feel free. But for right now, um, to activate these, we're going to do the 21 days. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, please make this a daily habit for the rest of your life. And uh, after 21 days, by all means, 
especially if you're already Reiki two or three, start working on other people. And even with Reiki one, you can definitely do Reiki on um, your food, on your water, um, on your money, um, on children, on animals. Um, the thing with animals is going to be a little bit different same with animals. Obviously with food, you just place your hands over. Anything that's not a person or an animal, okay, just place your hands over. And in fact, you can do that even with people and animals. Um, when it comes to this 21 day protocol, there is a difference with people and animals. Typically we start at the crown with people. With animals, you always start at the heart. So you start at the heart, then you come up, and then you go down, okay? Animals are very different. Um, humans, we, you can do just the head. Again, that's a whole other thing that I can, that's part of the teachings. Uh, right now, I want you to work on all seven chakras. The reason why we can work only on the head is because Everything that is connected to your physical body, which is also your invisible bodies, everything is linked, literally, physically wired to your brain. Um, but, like I said, and that's how Reiki started, but like I said, we're going to work through the chakras. Um, yeah, can you remind me again, please? It was right there. Uh, sorry, I just got a message that, that I needed to say something. I forgot it again already. Um, how do you activate the Reiki outside of this video when it's just you? Simply by putting your hands together and giving gratitude for the Reiki to flow through you and into you. So the way Reiki, the way the energy moves is it comes down the crown, it goes through two energy channels down the back to your tailbone, and then it comes interweaving up through the back of your shoulders, essentially in your heart area, and then it travels down the arms and through the hands. Uh, Like I said, it also goes to other parts, but when it's when you're making the intention, when you set the intention to do Reiki through the hands, using your hands, that's how the energy flows. So it's just simple. You just thank you for allowing me to be the conduit of this universal life force Reiki energy through me, and at this point, to me, okay? And then you place your hands. Now, you're going to, if you've ever practiced with different teachers, you're going to hear a lot of different things. Fundamental Reiki teachers will tell you that you're not allowed to place your hands on top of each other, that your fingers have to be just touching. Um, things have changed since the beginning of Reiki, okay? Our knowledge and awareness in particular. So if you feel the need to put your hands together, interlace them, that's fine. Place them side by side. As long as they're on your head, the top of your head, this is called your crown chakra. And so after you've given your gratitude, and, and again, you can call in your particular posse or teammates, energy helpers, then place your hands on your crown, and just with the intention of receiving. And you, if you do not feel anything, and a lot of you won't, especially if you have never received Reiki or have had any Reiki 1 or 2 attunements, you probably won't feel anything coming from your hands, heat or energy or anything. My suggestion to you, and that was my experience by the way for years, um, just leave your hands there for, for about five minutes. That's it. Just five minutes. You might have a, a clock near you. And just hold them there for five minutes. Okay. Otherwise, if you feel energy, five minutes or until the energy feels like it's dissipating. So if you feel heat, then your hands might suddenly 
lessen and feel cooler, then it's time to move to your third eye. So the crown is just the top, but your third eye is one hand on your forehead and one at the back of your head. That's your third eye, okay? It's very different when you do it for others. Sometimes you just do it like this, except for you'd be like this, because typically your person's laying down, you're over top of them. But this is just for you right now. And you can do Reiki on someone when they're seated, and this is essentially how you would do it. Um, although it is easier when people are laying down. And if you yourself are laying down at night, you can still tuck your hand under. And, and again, five minutes if you feel no energy or nothing in your hands. Or if you feel something in your hands, five minutes or until you feel the energy shift. So again, it might be really hot and then get cool. Or it might be tingling and then suddenly the tingling disappears, okay? This is position two. So one is the crown, two is the third eye. Now, I'm going to get you to cover your ears. So what I do is I put thumbs behind the ears and then I just kind of cup the ears. And again, you want to hold this position for five minutes or if you don't feel energy or any sort of sensation in your hands or if you do until the energy changes. When I'm sick, when I'm just starting to get a cold, this is where I draw the most energy. This is when my hands get the hottest. This is your uh, nose, ears, throat. Uh, energy center and I can literally get rid of uh, the cold just like that. Sometimes I'll just hold my hands here for 15-20 minutes. So again if you don't feel anything just five minutes okay or if you feel like you want to go longer that's okay but minimum five minutes and for those of you who feel the energy again until it shifts and changes. So the crown, the third eye, and then the ears. The next one is your throat chakra. So you want to cup your throat at the front and at the back. Now if you have shoulder issues, you can do it simply like this. Okay. And again, minimum five minutes or if you don't feel any energy or sensations in your hands or until the energy changes if you do. So the crown, I'm just going to keep going over, it doesn't matter how you hold your hands, I find it's easier like this. Crown, third eye, ears, throat, and now your heart. So you have a higher heart which is your thymus and your heart that pumps your blood, right? So we're on the left side. So you can hold your hands like this, or if you wish, you can place what, because just by holding your hand here, you're working both of those areas. And then touch your back or your shoulder, because your shoulders are connected to your heart. Again, it depends on your mobility of your arms, right? If you can reach back, that's fine. Otherwise, just this is effective. So, Ideally, you do want to work both. The energy centers of your third eye, your throat, your heart, your solar plexus, which is your stomach, and then your sacral, which is like your bladder area. There's an, a center that points outward at the front of your body and one that points outward at the back of your body. The crown and the root, which is literally right in your groin area, one comes up and the other comes in your body. So that's why if you do this, you can't really work the inside, just the outside, right? But when you're working, the, you're working both sides of your other chakras because they, they're like little funnels that point out like that, okay? Like that. So it is good to work 
uh, if you can on the back, okay? But if you can't, this is okay. And the reason why I say it's beneficial if you work on the back is something that you might want to know. Um, the front literally is your future. You step into the future. Everything about your front, you're facing your future. And everything back there is your past. So past life, past in this life issues, doesn't mean you, you're not able to um, activate that center and still create shifts and or receive healing by working only in the front. It's just that sometimes you just need to work on the back. However, like I said, if you have shoulder mobility issues and can't get your hand back there, and does it matter if your right hand is on the front or if your left hand's on the front? It doesn't matter. Just, just whatever feels right for you. The thing with Reiki is it activates your innate knowing, which is your intuition, and your body will just naturally move to where it wants to go. So if it does, try not to second guess, okay? Don't let um, dogma and protocol dictate your intuition. Let your body just move. Where do my hands want to be when I'm working on the heart? And sometimes you're going to find you want one hand on the heart, even though you've done the throat, and now you want to do the throat. Or you might have one hand, say you come down to the solar plexus, you might have one hand on your solar plexus and one in the throat. That may happen in time. In time, allow your hands to go where they need to go. And even when you're starting, but definitely the crown, for 21 days minimum, work on the crown, the third eye, the ears, the throat, and now the heart. Okay, same thing. Five minutes if you don't feel anything, or un if you do, until the energy shifts. Then you move down, and I'm going to have to stand up, or I'm going to just move my chair up. Then you move down to the solar plexus. So this, my navel's right here. You're basically above the navel and below the heart, okay? In that area. Hands splayed, hands together, it doesn't matter. And again, on the back. If you cannot reach your back, then hands on your solar plexus. And it doesn't matter, again, and you might even, even like this, okay? Just because it, the energy centers kind of come out this way, doesn't mean that if you're here, it's not working on your energy center. So whatever, again, it has to do with your mobility and your level of comfort. So again, if you don't feel anything, five minutes, and if you do, until the energy changes. Then below the navel, so again, the navel to, not tall enough, to your groin, right, to here, between your navel and your groin, this is your, this is your sacral. So one hand here, and one hand, it's kind of where your rump comes up, not quite in the lower back, okay? So either like this, or again like this, or like this. Whatever feels right for you, that's your sacral area. And again, if you don't feel anything, minimum five minutes, and if you do until the energy dissipates. Now the root chakra is literally, I'm gonna show you different things, it's literally cupping underneath, okay? Like this. Now, if that feels and looks weird for you, and by the way, when you do Reiki on others, you don't cut them there unless it's your spouse or your partner and you want it to lead to sex. That's because Reiki can sometimes lead to sex for some people. Um, but definitely if you're working on somebody, you don't want to touch them there. So all you do on your thighs, here, okay? Below the knees is your earth chakra. And actually below the feet is your earth chakra. But for right now, the thighs is good enough. Or where your hip bones are, there, okay? 
I like to work here because for me, when I'm working on the hip bones, I'm still in the sacral region and I want to get right into that root chakra. So, on the thighs. Those are your seven chakras. That's the basics, okay? If you want to add to uh, your grounding and a little more to your Reiki session, you can do your knees. So you can do them individually on top and behind, or you can do them just on top. And you can also do the soles of your feet, okay? And again, you're going to each position, five minutes if you don't feel anything, or if you do until the energy chips and changes. That's your 21-day protocol. Lots of water before and after throughout the day. Stay hydrated. It helps flush stuff out of your body. And because um, you're moving energy, that's essentially what you're doing. And um, when you have a pain in your body or you have any sickness or disease, it's because the energies don't aren't moving. There's it's it's like somebody puts a little brick in your body somewhere, and the energy can't because energy is constantly moving in your body, and so it's like you have a block there. And so when you activate through these attunements and do this 21 uh, day minimum self healing, it gets the energy flowing. Well, there's a lot of stuff, memory, and that can be hurt. And literally, it can be chemical toxins, right? If, you, if you're on medication or if you're eating a lot of sugar and it's creating stagnancy there, um, it can literally change the cell. And there can be toxins, like, yeah, literally toxins building up in, in the cells. And it releases that. So that's why you want to drink lots of water. You might find that you sleep better or you sleep less. Um, you might start having a lot of weird dreams or just dreaming a lot. You might start having past life recalls or memories from times that don't make sense to you. Um, there's a lot of things that could happen. Again, everybody's unique and individual. Um, and that's essentially regardless of whether you come here without any Reiki at all, or if you've come with Reiki 1 or Reiki 2 or even Reiki 3. Uh, so Reiki, if you've gone Reiki 1, 2, or 3, especially Reiki 3, um, if I haven't said this already, this is like taking a shot of espresso. Uh, it's just an energy boost because life, especially if you haven't been tending to your self-care, I know so many Reiki 3 people that they make their entire focus on everyone else. They still haven't learned the lesson and they forget themselves. Uh, most Reiki teachers are the ones that are most in need of Reiki, believe it or not, <laughs> because they forget their self-care. Um, but that makes sense. That's like doctors and nurses. We're so, uh, anybody, you know, chiropractors or massage therapists, we're, we're so focused on caring for others that we forget to care for ourselves. So if that's you, then your lesson with this is to remember self-care, radical self-care every day, not just for 21 days, for the rest of your life. Uh, 30 minutes a day, you are worth it. And if you don't think you're worth it, if you don't think you have time, then you have deemed yourself valueless. And why would you do that? Um, guys, is there anything else I need to share here? the 21 days that you've talked about what may or may not happen your experiences um, my emails below if you need to contact me uh, just for that for those of you that are new to me um, new to the channel even if you're familiar with the channel obviously I'm not creating uh, food videos at this time a lot of things have shifted for me uh, I'm focused on gardening right now so in that, if I don't get to you right away, please don't dismay. Um, I will get to you quite shortly, usually within three days. Uh, if you 
suddenly feel very ungrounded, spacey, lightheaded. Um, I would highly recommend that you get outside, especially if you, uh, if it's nice, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere. Get outside and put your feet on the ground, lay on the ground, sit on the ground, um, have a little something to eat, not a lot, just something to eat. Um, fat and protein are very grounding. Protein is your root chakra, fat is your sacral chakra, and carbohydrates are your solar plexus. So find what works for you. Uh, if you're familiar with stones, crystals, uh, you might want to get some black stones and just put them on your feet or put them in your pockets um, in the root earth and root chakra areas and that will help ground you. Um, there's a thing called uh, premature kundalini rising and it can scare a lot of people. It just means that you're having a sudden awake expansion and awakening, okay? And you don't know how to deal with it because it's so new. It, in fact, for some people it can be terrifying. Uh, just breathe, email me, and I will s guide you through how to, because I tune into you specifically, and I will guide you through how, what you specifically need to do <sighs> to get yourself grounded again. Uh, some people it's just continue with the Reiki. Some people you need to back off for a bit and I will send you distant Reiki for a while. Um, please do not, no, I'm not going to say that. Uh, I was going to say please don't engage in distant Reiki. Um, but definitely if you're new to Reiki or you're only, yeah, if you're new to Reiki, Essentially consider yourself Reiki 1. If you're Reiki 1, you're now Reiki 2. In spite of the fact that you've been attuned to all three levels, um, you still need to go through the process. You need to physically, energetically, mentally, emotionally. So this is part of your self-care. Don't rush to the finish line, okay? Uh, because if you do, uh, you're going to miss some really important things for you. Um, and this really is about you and then once you're in a certain energy space and consciousness then you can go out and help others by virtue of simply being present but also when you do get into teaching um, and or pract practicing of others. For right now this is for you. Um, There probably was something else I need to share, but it keeps slipping, so uh, I don't, I'm not sure why. That's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to share in this video. And um, yeah, it's simply to empower you. It's not to apprentice you. You're not an apprentice right now. This is just to empower you for self-healing uh, if you've never had Reiki before and if you're Reiki 1 and you want to advance to Reiki 2 and start practicing then you can. Um, I still think you need to do some now mental work, learn the symbol um, and Oh God, there's so much to Reiki. It's, every Reiki teacher is different, but there really is. It's like astrology and tarot and business and everything else in life, cooking, everything. There's just layers and layers and layers and layers, even gardening. There's layers and layers and layers of learning. Um, you don't know it all, even if you think you do. I've been doing this for decades and I still am learning. So um, that's the energy you want to be in, the perpetual student, even as the mass, supposed master teacher. Always remain the student. So bless you. And always bless yourself and bless others, because that uh, is a, a very high vibration. The energy, space, and consciousness of that is very rapidly oscillating. It's a high vibration, a high frequency. So blessings, kindness, gratitude. Make that your mantra. Blessings, kindness, and gratitude for yourself and of all living beings. All 
lives matter. All. All. Doesn't matter if visible, invisible. All life matters. Please remember that. Be kind to yourself and others. Um, bless yourself and others. Have gratitude for yourself and others. Be grateful to be alive, even if it doesn't feel like there's any reason. <laughs> the fact that you are alive, there is a reason. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for allowing me to facilitate this journey for you, these empowerment journey, this empowerment journey for you. Um, again, if you have any questions, um, feel free to contact me through email. And may you be blessed. May your journey be blessed. May you always be guided to higher consciousness, to greater unconditional love, to greater kindness, to greater self-care, and may you fully manifest the expression of what you have come to be and do in this lifetime. So thank you, bless you, and yeah. may love be with you always. Thank you.